everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this card. I'm not really sure what to call it. Obviously, you'll see the title of this video, but <laughs> at this moment that I'm filming, I'm not 100% sure still what it will be called. But it's, it's, I guess it's a diorama card, but it's actually stuck onto the front of a 6x6 card. Concertina scene card, maybe something like that, I don't know. But it all folds flat and it will fit into a 6x6 envelope. I just was having some fun trying to think of some different ways to, you know, make some cards. And this is what I came up with whilst I was doing a Facebook Live. I added some glitter there to the treasure. And I also, after the live, I remembered I had these little resin water drops. And you can just see the three of them that I've grouped together in there. So I'm going to show you those later. Uh, yeah, love all the little images there, all been coloured in using my coloured pencils and then I just die cut lots of different leaves and things just to make the seaweed there. And I just like that, you know, inside, normal card, you can write lots in there and it stands up really well. And it's when it stands up that you can see all the little elements on the acetate there that kind of look like they're floating and, you know, swimming through the sea. So yeah, let me show you how to make this really easy card. Okay, so first of all, I'll just quickly show you what it is that I'm using. So these are the water droplets. I actually got them from Dress My Craft, and I'll share the links in the video description. I think I got the um, assortment of sizes, but you can get, I think, small, medium, and large. But they're just really nice. I mean, they almost look like diamonds in there, if only. But you can see they're just, you know, almost like a cabochon as well, just very, very small you know, little pieces there, but they look really real. They look like water droplets. So yeah, glad I remembered them and actually got to use them. And then the sentiments and stamps. So this one I've used the birthday fishes. This is the paper discovery underwater world. This one here is what I used for most of those, you know, the sea creatures and the seaweeds and stuff. And that's the paper discovery beyond the sea. I also pulled out the treasure chest from this very well used and stained um, hunky dory. This was for the love of stamps and this was the under the sea. This is old, might find some sellers on eBay maybe with that one. And then I just said to people during the live, you know, just kind of rage your leaves and things like that. So these aren't even, you know, water scenes, um, dye, you know, water themed dyes, but these three here I used. I used this one here and then I used this one here from the actual paper discovery underwater world. That was the elements die set. And then, I, don't, I think I just showed it, I was going to, but there's these great ones here. You know, you can always use, you've got the bubbles there as well and some like coral. So that's all of those and they will be linked as always. So I've already got the stamp ready there and I've got all these bits and pieces cut ready to go in a moment. And then this was the paper pad I used and I've already cut the one that I need, but I used a piece from this. I did say in the live that the one I do on YouTube, I was gonna do maybe that one there. So what I'll probably, see is because it's on the reverse is I'll just flip that over and we'll see how that one looks so you get to you know just see two different kind of versions but this again was an old one I think at the time some people were looking online and said it had sold out but there may be some sellers on eBay I will have a little look and see if I can find it I did buy a couple of pads at the time I wished I brought more because it's just such a lovely paper pad and this is called fresh feelings and it was from the works okay so first of all you want a piece of cardstock that's ten and a quarter by four and a half and along the ten and a quarter side, you want to score at half an inch, one inch, one and a half, two, and two and a half. And then just flip it to the other side and just score again. Half, one inch, one and a half, two, and two and a half. And you will have a five and a quarter rectangle here in the middle. Okay, so that's all the scoring. If you don't have a six by six card blank, you could pop that onto a five by seven and you could obviously, you know, those of you that are happy to change the measurements, you can certainly put this on any size card. But this one here, if you don't have it pre-made, then you will want a piece of, well, these are pre -made, these are, you know, shop brought ones. So they, although they say they're six by six, they're actually shorter. For the sake of this video, I just cut a piece of, you know, a piece of 12 inch and cut it in half at six inches and score down the middle of the long side at six inches. That'll give you a six by six. This has been cut from a piece of A4. So it's just there, just shy of 11 and three quarters. So if you've got a piece of A4, cut it so that it's five and seven eighths of an inch. And then along the long side, score again at five and seven eighths of an inch. Because that's roughly, you can see there where that score line's hitting there at five and seven eighths. But like I said, if you've got the, the pre-brought ones, then just use that one. Now we'll fold and burnish all that in a moment. First of all, you want to die cut your aperture in the middle. So I have this one here, which is just from my stash. And the size of this is three and five eighths of an inch by four and three quarters. And you just want to sit that one here. Now I'm going to bring mine up so it's higher to the top. So I've got more at the bottom here. It's going to be covered with these pieces here, which are to look like the, the seabed, the sand, and um, you know, so, you know, you're not going to see this wider gap here, but I just think it's nicer to have that 
opening higher up so you get to see more of what's inside the card. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of my washi tape and I'm just going to make sure I've got a kind of a nice even, you know, the sides and the top here. It's about right, I think. I'll bring it down a little bit. Just stick that in the middle. I'm just going to run that through my machine. Okay, so that's that piece done. Let's just take that off. That's a good piece of scrap there. It's lovely this one actually because it's got the crosses as the detail there instead of like stitching. Okay so now we want to pop a sheet of acetate onto the back here. I need to actually trim that one down a little bit. So you want it to be just slightly smaller than the four and a half by five and a quarter. So I would make this so that it is, um, I do five by four and a quarter. You want to make sure it's going to cover that area. So now when I stick that over there, you can see it just covers all of that. Okay, but depending on obviously the size of your die that you've used, yours might be a little bit different. I'm just going to grab some red tape and I'm just going to run a strip around this frame here. So just hug the frame and stick that on all of the four sides. Now just taking the backing off of there and then with this one I'm just going to start from, I'll well, start from the top here make sure it's over equal sides and just roll that down so that it sticks evenly over it all like so. If you've got anything sticky, so I've got a bit of it sticky there, I'm just going to use my anti-static buddy and don't worry if you get it on the acetate itself because you can just wipe that clean but the powder will just, you know, remove any little sticky bits that you maybe can't see, like so. And now I can run my hand over there and nothing, none of that's sticky. Like I said, I can give that a wipe, it's actually okay, there's not too much on that. There we go. So now we want to fold and burnish the score line. So the ones closest to the frame there, you want it to be a mountain fold, so each of those score lines need to be mounting folds and then just concertina fold back from that one so then that'll be a valley then another mountain a valley like this okay next we want to add the pattern paper so you can see there that's going to go on there but I want it to be stuck so that those pieces are on the back because then we'll attach that piece to the front of the card Okay, so you can see that all of that lovely kind of coral and seaweed effect there. So just giving you still that underwater card, but just a slightly different um, colour. So now I want to grab my glue and I'm going to pop glue to the outer tab there on the inside. And I'm going to stick that one over like so should line up perfectly if not just trim it a little bit like so and then this one I'm just going to open up and you want to check when you go and stick it in that everything will fold flat and if it buckles at all which mine is I'm just going to reposition it you might need to trim it but just make sure it folds flat yeah so I'm actually going to trim a little bit off from that side there so this glue's, you know, still fine. I don't need to reapply any. It actually goes a bit tackier if you um, pull it apart. And now, can you see that whole thing folds flat like that, without any kind of, you know, um, without the cardstock buckling or anything? There we go. Okay, it needs to be flat, otherwise it's going to look a bit funny on the card. Then I've got these pieces here. So I've got two pieces that are actually five and one eighth of an inch wide. So that one and this one. And I cut them all to one and a half wide, sorry. So two of them are five and one eighth, you know, length. And then they were all one and a half high. And then I just went with my scissors and kind of cut a little curve in them and inked them up with some brown. These are actually, one of them is gonna stick right on the very back, like so. This one is going to stick on one of the first concertina parts. I'll show you properly in a moment, just to give you an idea, like so. And then this one is five and a quarter wide, so it's the whole width of the frame, and that's going to stick right over there, 
okay now if you want to you could put it inside maybe I should do that this this one actually I should do the same and have it inside so it actually looks like you're looking into a fish tank because uh, you know I was saying this one really is more like I'm already under the water with them and I'm just seeing this little scene under the water but if you want to create more of an aquarium or like a, a fish tank then I would have everything inside this frame but actually no I am going to put it on the outside purely because I've already cut all these lovely little bits and pieces and I want to bring them out you know out of the frame itself so first of all We'll stick this one down and then I'll show you how to stick that middle one so this one you just want to add glue over all of it and then just slide that one in right on the back and it will fit into there perfectly because you've cut it just slightly shorter than that five and a quarter okay like so and then this one here you just want to add a little bit of glue to just the, the ends there and it's going to sit in this here so if I just slide it in and hold it up so you can see and just line it up so it's flush with the bottom again I'll bring it up in a second so you can see but that one now is stuck here oh but it's not stuck on that side I thought we felt a bit funny there we go let's just push that down see it all folds flat that's what you want there you go you can see where I've got that one okay it still needs to stick a bit more and then this one here, I'm just going to add glue kind of along the bottom there and a little bit up the sides and that's going to stick right on the front. So I'm just going to hold that there and just make sure everything's nice and secure. Okay, so now we have this cool background ready to build our scene. So I've gone ahead and coloured and cut all of these pieces out and I've also just die cut these bits here and I've just distressed them a little bit with some like darker green ink just on the edges just to, you know, make it look a little bit more um, dimensional. So now I want to recreate this scene here. I really like that, so I'm gonna stick with the same kind of thing. But for this one and this one, I wanna pop them on some little strips of acetate. Just got some here and I'm just gonna cut about a half inch strip. I'll probably use that for both pieces. Cut it in half. The height of it is entirely up to you, so it's, you know, it's not really worth me saying, you know, how high because yours might be slightly different in terms of size and you might be putting it on a bigger card but I'm just going to run a strip along the bottom and I'll just show you how you know what to do but lots of you will know and if you make pop-up box cards and things like that then you will you know know exactly what to do you're just sticking it on the back there I might trim the bottom of that but for now I'll just pop them on there and then with this one I'm going to do the same so 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 I'll then put another bit because that one for the seahorse is probably just the right height so I won't remove any more of that and let's get that one stuck down first actually so I'll just take that off I'll get these stuck in and then I'll pop it on high speed just to get the rest finished so I'm actually going to stick this behind that second one so going in behind this one here and then I can bring it right up and stick it about there Okay, so you can see it kind of, it does stand, look, you can see it's not falling against the back there. So make sure it's a nice strong acetate to keep it, you know, upright. And then this one, let's just see if I need to trim anything off. Because I'm going to build up that seaweed in front. I'll probably have it about there, just swimming by, so no, I don't need to remove anything like that. So just check your length, I mean you can always trim off the acetate even once you've stuck it down because the bottom of the, the card is all open. You know, you could easily trim off anything that's sticking out here. So again... So I'd say any of the little pop-up pieces, stick down first and then you can build up everything else now is going to be stuck on. But they both, you can see, they're both standing up right. So I'm going to carry on now and get the rest all stuck down.
so that's all stuck down. I really like it. I think it looks so cool. And then these ones, just to show you, I mean, the easiest way I've found to stick them down is using a little bit of my Kalau. So I'm just grabbing one of each size. So let's see if I can get the medium. There we go. Oh, um, like so. It's a little bit fiddly. I mean, if you've got one of the, in fact, I've got the pickup tool. It might be easier to use that, but then I've got to get in there anyway. But I'll start with the largest one. And I'm going to kind of have the bubbles just down by that fish and just put a little tiny bead of the glue behind. You have to kind of, oh, try not get it so it lands upside down. Oh dear, that didn't go well. Let's start again. Like so. Now the cloud dries completely clear. So you just lift this up and you can go in there with your hand. I'm going to pop it oh, wherever it lands, just about there. I mean, you don't need this. You could use glossy accents and do that before you stick it all together if you'd find it easier, but it's okay, I can do this. So you can just make them out. Again, it's one of those things you can see better in person. You can see them better on that one because I think against the background. I know I get the glare every now and then, so I'm just trying to make sure I don't hit my lamp. You can see them there. So anyway, it's just a nice little touch. If you've got them, use them. Like I said, you could use the um, glossy accents, they create nice effect and also some of your Nouveau drops as well. So now I'm going to stick this one onto here but before I do so I'm going to stamp and I, this time I'm going to stamp directly on because I did say during the live I'll try and do the things that we were suggesting during the live. So for example this one here I stamped it separately, framed it with a little blue card and then popped it on some foam and stuck it on. So that's the way you can do that one if you prefer. But for this one I thought I'd stamp directly onto the cardstock which is how I actually done my little prototype. Now when you stick this you want to make sure you stick it right down so it's flush with the bottom of the card because when it stands up that's you know it gives it a great effect. If you bring it up so there's like a white bit there it's going to look like it's floating and I think it's just not going to look as effective. So you want to keep that down there okay and then I can see if I just measure one and a half oh. So I'm just going to use my grid here and I can see this is one and then a half so I'm going to line my ruler there so I know that I want to stamp within this section. So I've just got the birthday fishes and I'm going to use my VersaFine here. Get that nicely inked up. If you'd rather put this in your stamping platform, you know, if you've got one then do so. But I'm just going to freestyle this one. So birthday fishes, I think about come up a little bit higher. Perfect, it's really nice. And then I can just now grab my glue and then I'm gonna kind of tilt it down so I can get it along the bottom first. Just make sure you've got it even white on each side. Okay, so there is the finished card. Doesn't that look awesome? Love it, it's just so much detail going on there and it's got a great profile when it's stood up as well so really pleased with it. So I'm glad I've got one to keep for myself now because during the live I did say actually I love this too much now I want to keep it so I'll decide which one I end up keeping. I like to display them for a while but I'm pleased as punch with those. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial, I hope it's um, inspired you to, you know, you can create any scene you want, it doesn't have to be underwater at all. You, know, you could have a little fairy garden with little gnomes and mushrooms and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, <laughs> let your mind wander. So thank you for watching as always, I'll try and share as many links below in the video description and I'll be back very soon with another tutorial. Take care, bye!